Good evening and welcome to El Oso Fumar Takes. This is our 72nd take live from Euless, Texas. I'm your host as always, Bear Duplissy, and I am so excited uh, to be welcoming you all in tonight. Got a fantastic guest uh, that I'm really excited to talk to and sit down with. So it's going to be a fantastic so show. So glad you could tune in uh, because it's going to be one of those uh, amazing, amazing shows. So, But before we get started, we got to thank the folks that make this possible, which are our sponsors. And this show, of course, is sponsored by Drew Estate. Drew Estate is a untraditional story that is one of daring heartbreak and success but most of all a one of passion for the cigars in the country of nicaragua where they've been making cigars since 1998. jonathan drew and marvin samel are not your average cigar makers their story does not begin in cuba or with fathers in the cigar business but it started with the dream much like our guests tonight and their can-do spirit and never say die attitude made drew estate one of the premier cigar manufacturers on the planet. And if you want to check out one of Drew Estate's recent products, Herrera Esteli Miami has been landing at Drew Estate, Drew Diplomat retailers all of this past week. They will be uh, shipping the awesome product in five different Vitolas from the famed El Tito de Bronze factory on Calle Ocho and Little Havana. So check out that and all of Drew Estate's offerings at your local tobacconist and enjoy the cigars and we really appreciate you guys tuning in tonight if you're watching us live on youtube or if you're going to download us later and be listening to us on your favorite place for podcasts whether that's itunes apple Podcasts, google play spotify tune in podbean or wherever else you listen to podcasts we're available everywhere and we're available exclusively because of um, because of Cornelius and Anthony Cigars. Cornelius and Anthony Cigars is one of the oldest cigar manufacturers in the country, and we really appreciate them as a sponsor. The For over 150 years, the Bailey family has been part of America's tobacco heritage, passionately caring for the land they cultivate in Keysville, Virginia. Cornelius and Anthony's devotion to the finest grown tobacco and foremost aspects of craftsmanship allows them to introduce the most exquisite cigars to the market. They invite you to enjoy their portfolio of premium hand-rolled cigars and experience their dedication to producing an exceptional product. So we really appreciate Cornelius and Anthony, the exclusive sponsors of what brings you to the audio airwaves for uh, LLC from our takes. We really appreciate them and appreciate you all tuning in. And uh, we are so excited to welcome in our guest this evening, uh, who is like me, ecstatic that the Boston Red Sox finally won a game. It's and three. That and if it wasn't, and if they didn't win today, we were also grateful that it's National Beer Day because we would have taken advantage with that as well. So uh, exactly. without further further ado, I am so pleased and so honored to have Mr. Casey Johnson, the Jack of all trails, Jack of all trades, national sales for Tatuaje and Latelier Imports. Casey, how are you doing tonight? Good. How are you, Bear? Thank oh. you for having me on. Oh, I'm so excited to have you on. I'm And thank you for joining us. Uh, Sunday night, I know it's... Um, you know, probably your only day to relax and, uh, but I appreciate the, appreciate the it's time that you're able to give me. So thanks, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So, um, really, really quickly, I just wanted to, uh, quickly ask, um, so what has, what has got, what has it been like to watch the, I'm sorry, I can't even spit it out. It's just been so awful. What has it been like to ride the wave? Cause I, of the, uh, of course, World Series championship and then the depressing start to the baseball season so that I can lament a little bit with a fellow fan here for a second. Uh, actually, it's been it's been about patience. You know, uh, I, the West Coast piece was killing me. I stayed up the first few nights uh, to watch the start of the season and uh, finally got some sleep again because I said, you know what? It's early on. I don't need to watch right now. Uh, it's... It definitely is, man. And like I was telling you before the show, I think it's great that they're actually uh, they're slumping now. I mean, if they were slumping in the middle of the season, or God forbid, at the end, and I right. mean, who knows what happens? Of course, for the for the remainder of the season. But if they were doing this at the end, I mean, people would be burning buildings down. I mean, I got I got to tell you, I uh, the, this whole Sandy Le Sandy Leone thing in the minors is driving me nuts. He's the one that managed the pitching staff in the World Series. And then towards the tail end. And yes, I know he can hit, but uh, there's something to, we need a Veritech back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was a big Sandy fan. I really was. And, and, yeah, me too. And I mean, I think, I think, I certainly think Christian Vasquez has some talent. And, oh, totally. Uh, 
Blake Swihart had a lot of upside when he first got up and everything, but I think that, um, I mean, he's so versatile. You could almost use him anywhere. Um, and I think that's what he's going to be a utility guy for somebody. I just don't, I don't see him being with us a, as a whole towards the end. I think, uh, I think he might be up here for trade issues or trade a chance to trade him. Yeah, that'd be, you know, I, th I think you could get some, I think you could definitely get some value for him. You know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm 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 worried that this you know this might be Brock Holt's last year because I I'm a big Brock Holt fan. I, me too. I, me too. I just I think he's I mean he's nothing he's nothing absolutely spectacular uh, until he does something spectacular. It's kind of the way I describe him. <laughs> he's he's, he's everything. He gave what Petey couldn't give last year. Right. You know, Petey was out. He he's that guy. He's that energy in the dugout. And I know Petey was in the dugout, but he's it wasn't the same. He's not right. day to day guy. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, Casey, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Anytime. really excited to have you on. And, uh, so, so a lot of fantastic, you guys just, uh, um, I don't know if you guys have quite wrapped it up yet. You might've just wrapped it up, but, um, for the last few months, you guys have been on, uh, this amazing barnstorming tour across the country with this great, um, <laughs> um, this is a great event series. I mean, this is like the third event series in a row that you guys have done where it's yeah. just, it's been met with such, such amazing critical acclaim. And, and we of course hosted you guys down here in Texas and it was uh, fantastic. So tell us a little bit about that, uh, about that event um, series and yeah. what, how that ended up for you guys. So that started out actually sitting around in uh, LA at Pete's house after uh, the IPCPR show. And, uh, it, uh, it was an idea that I had a couple of years ago, event based, um, kind of, kind of like our factory tour. When we go down on these S and S trips or on a factory tour with the BOTL guys, um, we ask for a wish list of cigars. So, you know, we come up with different ones and one of them happens to be one of the, uh, cigars that we, uh, had done for the potluck series, which was the, uh, tender chop which is the pork tenderloin and uh, a pork chop kind of hybrid. So it was uh, it was Habano version of the uh, pork tenderloin. And it, it's a delicious, a delicious stick. So, um, and then, and our others uh, were just kind of sitting around goofing, trying to think of uh, unicorns to come up with all kinds of variations and, and uh, using different wrappers on, on bases that we already had and in small batch runs. Um, What's it like to have, I mean, you gotta, you gotta think that that's basically, you just described it a minute ago, a wish list. You, you, that you basically just can start having, I mean, fun. I mean, how much, I mean, how much fun was that? I mean, the, the genesis of the, of the concept, it's just you guys sitting around just, yeah. throwing ideas out and it, and it happens and poof. And then you guys actually go to work on the project. I mean, how, how that must've been just amazing, right? It, it was great because we're just in our head running numbers, looking at uh, what would work for blends and sizes. Um, it, it's just, it is a lot of fun. And, and you know what, with, with everything that's going on with the FDA, um, that creativity has kind of slipped by the wayside a little bit for a lot of people. I mean, there's an open window, but we're able to do some fun things now with this potluck series. Um, and uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if it, it if it does. We're about halfway through, Bear. So uh, we've still got more to go. Um, we so have, it's it's 30 events, 30 total yeah. events. You guys have only done about 15 of them? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're, oh. we're still out there. It just felt like, I mean, it's, it's just like our bus tour. Everybody's like, right. you're on tour for a month. No, it was seven days, but it felt like a month at times. You know, it, 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 it's, it's fun. It creates uh, positive noise. Um, and uh, it creates that energy that we want. And, and realistically, when it comes down to it, the, this potluck series was all about uh, treating the end consumer to something that they'd never, or, or a very small run of something and treating the, uh, the retailer to a bang up event. Uh, and they were all good. I mean, I think we, sh we sold out at your event in two and a half hours. I think um, that was, which hit, uh, which hit the over under mark for my, for my personal, <laughs> my personal, um, personal goal. And my personal call was, I was like, 
I was like, I think we're, we'll, we'll probably sell out in about two, two and a half hours. And sure enough, we did. And I was like, man, yeah. Should have had, should have had someone take me up on that. Yeah. Dan, uh, Dan hit a uh, home run up in Wisconsin, which was awesome. He, uh, he blew it out in about an hour, which I was floored by. Uh, was but, that at uh, Tyler Jeffrey's place? That was. Tyler, yeah. yeah but t- Tyler, uh, Tyler's the human hype machine, isn't he? Oh my gosh, man! That, that, I think awesome. he, was, he was promoting you guys like two months in advance. It was awesome. <laughs> like it was great. He really was. He really he, was. He, he did he, a great job. This is how much of a genius is. Like we were doing a promo video, uh, for for the event at our shop and Michael's yeah. and Eula's, and he jumps on the th- he jumps on it to promote. To promote the show for oh, you know, totally. to promote the event for him himself. He's like, Oh, it's gonna be great. He starts telling us like telling everything uh, detail more details <laughs> about the event and everything. I'm like, Oh, this is great. And at the very end, he's like, And I'm gonna be doing we're gonna be having one too. And I was like, Oh man, dude, nice. <laughs> Solid move. Solid because it's total classy. It's yeah, total, no, like, he's it's total he's classy. that guy. And he you, is, you know, man. and he does it with a lot of great brands, Tyler does. And mm-hmm. and that's what's so exciting about um a, a, a store manager or a, a humidor guy that is all behind it doesn't matter what brand it is if they're if they're a hundred percent behind it that hype is built and the end consumer wins in the long run you know because they're right. able to feel that that energy oh, so absolutely and i hope he he's a he's a loyal listener to the show so i hope he's a uh, beat red right now with just you know <laughs> being embarrassed uh, that we would uh mention him like this but uh he uh he does do a terrific job and yeah um and you guys have been doing a sensational job with that event it's it's it was it was a lot of it was a lot of fun and and i think that you know there's there's a lot of great folks in this industry when they do events um it's it's more than just an event you right. know and and you guys definitely bring that so that kind of leads me into my what was kind of going to be my initial question, but it, I wanted it. I, it we kind of took off on that little tangent there. But yep. so in 2012, when this all started, when you when you came into the industry with the, with this, we'll call it a project at the time, the Latelier yep. Imports Project. When you came into the industry in 2012, did you ever have? Was this where it is today, and the success that it has? Was that was that part of your vision, yours, Casey Johnson's vision? Did you see it where it is today? Uh, I don't know if it's hit the same path, but um, pretty similar. Um, I didn't. Ne- I never saw Casper leaving. He went to the music business. He 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 left us a year ago, but um, I, almost exactly a year ago. Um, but I did see there was going to be some longevity in it. Um, uh, working in a group compared to Pete working by himself. Um, I knew that we were going to be able to get some good results and it, it, it you know, it, it had some fair fanfare early. Uh, the regular lat when it came out big, big time and still, it's still getting great ratings. They yeah. Just got a 93 in cigar aficionado, uh, last magazine. So, um, I smoked it the other day. It's still, Still it's, great as I remember. Every, it every still time. rocks, you know. It's uh, it's 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 about the leaf. Um, it's it's about um, the group, Dan, Pete, I, and and Casper working together to make this all work. Um, it's been a fun. It was a fun run, and it still is a fun run. Uh, now that we're under the big umbrella with with Pete, um, it's a little bit different, but not not much. And uh, um, so we talked about the original uh, Latelier release, and then uh, you and I tonight. Uh, while you wish you could be joining me in a smoke, I wish. Uh, yeah. I am. I am enjoying the Latelier. Uh, I and so I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be that guy. And I'm gonna mispronounce it. Uh, is it the identity? Is that how you guys say it? Or it is, is it, okay? It is exactly. Oh, I did. Okay. Wow. It's okay. Perfect. Yeah. It, it must be the. It must be the Red Sox hat. There. That's probably <laughs> my hat. So. My yeah, right. so this is a binder filler wrapper Sancti Spiritus. So that that leaf, that varietal is uh, um, prevalent throughout our line. Uh, mm-hmm. This is the only one that has it in binder filler and wrapper. When you first started the project, and this was was that always the intention was to have the Sancti Spiritus as the foundation for, or ha- as a part of every sequent you know sequential uh, release of it. No, it took the uh, Maduro actually to uh, get us to uh, 
to straighten us out a little bit. So uh, the maturation of the business was the regular black label, the regular lat. Um, and then we went to the uh, SS or the uh, special selection. Um, mm -hmm. And then came along the Maduro. So Pete sent up samples um, from Nicaragua. Um, and we liked them. There is just, but it was just a Maduro. It was just a Connecticut broadleaf cigar. A uh, couple, couple um, variations, and we were happy with it. We weren't ecstatic about it. So uh, the trip to Nicaragua happens, and I think it might have been Dan and Pete just bantering back and forth. And Dan said, "What if we put Sancti Spiritus in in one of the binders?" And Pete goes, "Hmm." And Dan brings it up. He's like, hmm, barnyard, fresh cut hay, and chocolate. Really? Is that going to work? Um, the guys rolled them. We smoked them. And it was it, they just meld each other so well. They balance each other. Uh, that up against the, the wrapper. Uh, mm -hmm. It worked. So uh, that was our home run. And then we decided, you know, ER, the ER series, Sancti Spiritus, um, uh, Identite, anything that we've done, has, and the La Mission, mm -hmm. Sancti Spiritus, somewhere that's prevalent in in the in the cigar. The uh, the thing that I remember about the Maduro, um, my my first impression of it um, was, and it and it's still something I talk about to this day about that particular cigar is. You met, you mentioned the 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 meshing of flavor flavors, you know, chocolate and, and and barnyard, and what the result is, at least on the retro hell to me, is a very distinct, and very very beautiful floral, um, yeah. on the nose. And there's a lot of folks that find I, I find that floral notes uh, tend to be polarizing. Like there's mm -hmm. people who are like, oh, that's that really, com you know, that makes the cigar really complex. And there's people that are like, ah, I'd rather do without it. Um, <laughs> but for from for my money, I think that what I found the most interesting about it was the fact that it was a Maduro and it had that such that that because that's something that I'd never right. experienced before in a right. Maduro. And and that's what I think made that cigar really interesting for me and enjoyable too like i'm not just using the word you know when people say interesting they really mean like oh i think it's a piece of shit and that's not true <laughs> um so uh you know but that's what made it interesting for me and that's what really captive you know captivated me and captured the larger, me on that particular cigar i got similar notes in the in the larger ring gauge cigars but in like if you smoke the 44 um we used to just call that it was a little uh, a little s'mores it was graham cracker it was that marshmallow ish it was it was a lot of chocolatey notes that we we liked so much. So, but yeah, I know it, the, the product that that became um, was a little confusing confusing to some people on that floral piece. And I get where you're going, but it it was it was just so good though. And oh, I know. It was just yeah. like something that something the industry hadn't even seen before, yeah. and that's that's what that's what was really. Really fantastic about and, it. So, and, 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 and it's in the, in its defense, we we actually put it to rest for a little while. We've we're 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 not producing it right now. Mm -hmm. Um and uh you know it will come back at some point. It just uh it ran its course. I mean, in the industry of what's new, what's new, what's new. Mm -hmm. Um it just uh wasn't uh wasn't turning on the shelves as well. And uh Pete being an ex retailer guy retail guy and, and uh me being in touch with a lot of the retailers, same as Dan, uh, we want that stuff to turn for these for for the the retailer. You know, that's that's probably one of the, um, and I realize it must be a hundred times worse or harder and more difficult for someone in your position, um, but that is one of the most difficult things to do when you work in the retail sector is putting a brand to rest um that just you love but mm -hmm. just doesn't move and yeah. for whatever reason and um there was um there was there have been a couple of times that we uh we do it every now and then uh throughout the course of the year and there was uh the last couple of times uh, some cigars have appeared on that table and you're just like oh it's just gut-wrenching yeah <laughs> like and uh um but uh it's it, we, it, it is 
it's it's difficult, I'm sure. Yeah, no, it is difficult. But the the piece is it had some very good pockets around the country that it did well. And then there was just others that it was not turning the way it should. And uh, it's it's not to say it's gone away for good because it, it hasn't. Uh, we'll we'll reenter it again. Um, it's just uh, it's one of those things where we told uh, we told some of the retailers, we told the reps that we we're going to just put it to rest for now. I, I got a lot of actually pushback from guys in Chicago for some reason. The Maduro Forty Four why are you getting rid of that? And I'm like, uh, just needs time to, to sit on, you know, sit, sit back and, and we'll re-enter it some other time. They, they yeah. got so mad, so re mad. Rehype it up. Well, just tell them to go to work for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The, uh, what's, um, what we were kind of talking about before the show and what I really find interesting about this this project that's become its own distinct brand within the brand. Mm -hmm. um, now that you guys are all under the same umbrella. So you have Tatuaje, Latelier and surrogates. And um, what's interesting about Latelier specifically is to me, while, um, and, and I, and I said this before the show with, with all due respect to the amazing foundation that Pete built um, with Tatuaje, the, Latelier is so distinct. Mm -hmm. And even though it's built on the foundation, um, I feel like this is my opinion now. I feel mm -hmm. like that it's it is just as is is delivering just as good in terms of quality, complexity, and all around amazing cigars as the original, you know, the original brand. Now, obviously, Tatuaje's portfolio is considerably larger, right? But to me, it's it's it is so distinct and can stand on its own almost. Even though you guys did bring it into the umbrella, what? What again? When kind of take take it back to two thousand and twelve? Did you did you see it eventually coming to this point where that you guys would kind of join, kind of rejoin hands again, or was it was it oh, was it set to be a distinct uh, a distinct path? I think it was it was set to be a distinct path. I think part uh, part of uh the positive of being linked together now is uh, we tell one story where we're telling two stories, diff different stories. Um, even though we were a group of, of four that worked together with, you know, you know, with, uh, with Tatuaje, we see what they do. I, I think the distinction that, that we have with Latelier is our foundation is Sancti Spiritus. If, if you know what I mean, um, where Pete, his foundation is Brown label. That's the beginning of his family tree. You know, everything's based off of that. So we did carve our own path. Pete helped us in that way. I mean, we've been blessed to work with the Garcia family. Um, they got us that tobacco through Oliva tobacco. Um, and, uh, that alone, Sancti Spiritus has been, uh, a playground for us. And we've had a lot of fun. It's, it's been a great run. So one of the one of the comparisons that, particularly when the original Atelier was released, that it was you know very there was a lot of you know that word gets thrown around a lot. It was very Cuban esque, mm -hmm. has Cuban esque qualities. Is that something that you um, embrace, or is that something that you're like, no, this is this is something this is something special, or could it be a mix? It's it's a little mix of both. Um, we we didn't go out. And, 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 and make that to be that Cuban, I think, but we did, I mean, bear, when I was, when I was first doing events with that atelier, I'd uh, walk into a store. And at the time I was working out of New Jersey. Uh, we didn't have Mo as our rep yet. Um, I had a lot of medium built cigars, right? I had a lot of medium built cigars and I'm walking into Jersey shops, right? And all those Jersey shops are like, Hey, you got anything that's full body? And we're like, uh, not really. This is, and I hate to use the Cuban-esque piece. I think it was very unique to the business. Uh, um, it had it had some the flavors of Nicaragua, that that rich boldness, but it had some creaminess, the creaminess element. They had that barnyard hay that Dan talks about all the time, um, but it also had the complexity of uh, of 
there was a nutty flavor to it. And it's funny because Pete and I talk about it. Uh, you, you, you put the cigar down and you come back a little while later and you smell the ashes and it almost has that peanut and butter element to it. That's that, 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 that retro, that flavor that you mm -hmm. smell is like, Whoa, where'd that come from? It's very unique. So I think it's a balance between the two. Uh, I, I don't like to use that Cuban esque piece because, uh, you know, we got a lot of backlash at first about looking Bahike like, um, yeah, right. That wasn't our intent, you know, but to, to your credit with that, that was something that a lot of folks said that they, they had had both and they yeah. prefer, they prefer the Latelier over the Bahike. I mean, right, that's, right out of the box. I mean, that's gotta, yeah. that's gotta make you feel good. No matter. It did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eight, uh, you know, eight nine dollar cigar compared to a you know fifty two dollars. Yeah, cigar. I was gonna say, regardless of intent, that's gonna make you feel pretty darn good yeah. about it. The um, the again to talk about the uniqueness of the the cigar, which we were talking about the Maduro just a few moments ago. The, the thing that I feel I still find, um, I still find today whenever I smoke that cigar, and like I said, I smoked it uh, the other day for the first time in a while, just cause you know, working in retail, you, you smoke a lot of different items and um, just how, yes, it is medium bodied. Um, and when you have something that rich, like if you mm -hmm. just described what the way you just described it, the richness, oh, the rich overtones of it and the complexity of it, mm -hmm. um, you would not assume um, the wrapper on that cigar. Um, no. You know, you would probably drift towards something that, you know, that, that, Pete's more known for, which is broadleaf uh, specifically. Right. So it's um, that in itself, I think, is 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 one of the very very unique characteristics of the original Atelier, right? Um, that I really enjoy. Well, it was funny because at, at the show, you know, everybody came through the booth. We were blessed, you know, to be part of Pete, and and we were actually sandwiched in a small booth between my father and Tatawahi, and we had all the traffic and the guys that were intrigued by it were really sat down with us in the booth. We had a comfortable booth and they smoked it and they got it. The guys that stepped through and tried to blow through that cigar wouldn't get it at all. Um, it, it just has, it, it, it has something special that people, if you're really checking out those nuances, um, you'll enjoy it a lot. And I'm, I'm asking a lot of people to, to re-enter in, into that again. What's, what's old is new. Go after it. It's, it's a really great, it's a really great strategy. Um, and I actually, it, it's, it's interesting you bring it up because I had Omar DeFrias of uh, Fratello Cigars on mm -hmm. a few weeks ago and he mentioned that this, the same dilemma, it, it's something that you guys uh, as manufacturers and brand owners are all in this, this, this very difficult position right now because of the deeming regulations. And while some of you were able to get some stuff to market before mm -hmm national releases and stuff so there still is a little bit of something new it's it's forcing you guys uh to be extra creative on top of the cr the amazing creativity you already have mm -hmm. um but you know as omar put it sometimes you just have to go back to the reason you're there in the first place and he says you know he would say that he, he had mentioned to one of his patrons like well when's the last time you had a classico the original release right oh it's been a while well then it's probably new to you now yeah so. Yeah, when's the try. last time we smoked it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And exactly. Uh, and that's why I that's why I really like going back to brands that I particularly enjoy. I like going back to, you know, the reason I fell in love with them in the first place. And I really encourage people if they haven't if they haven't uh, picked up a Latelier, uh, the original, in a long time to to re to revisit it. You'll you will uh, you will remember. Yeah, <laughs> you I know why. I, in the in the last month, uh, being on the road and doing the potluck tour, I've had more people come up with old boxes. Ten, when, I don't know if you guys remember or you remember the ten count boxes of the Lat Forty Six, the uh, special selection. That yes. was the original, uh, you know, the original special selection that we had. Oh my God, guys are bringing in left and right in ten count boxes. They're like, look what I have, you know, and. Uh, I'm I'm blown away that these guys still are bringing. This is one of my favorite cigars, or this is the, the cigar I learned to smoke with. You know, um, amazing. You know th that that piece to me is mind boggling because I I do see bear when I go when I go on the road and I see 
people talk about my brother or talk to my brother about first cigar I ever had was a Tatuaje. It's, it's mind blowing right. because there's such history there already, you know, in a business that's so old. Uh, we're very blessed to have a good group of people that uh, smoke our cigars, whether it's the Saints and Sinners crew or BOTL guys that have been been with us for a long time. So that's going to lead me into my last question. But before there, I, I, you brought up something, man. I got I got to ask you about that. What does that feel like when someone says to you, "You're the reason I'm here"? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It is. It was. It is. Uh, it, it, it's 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 mind blowing to me because uh, when I first first started doing events and I'd walk in with Pete and they'd be like, "Hey, you're Pete's brother. Huh? Nice to meet you." And, or, "Hey, you're Dan." And I'm like, "No, I'm Casey." I'm Pete's brother. <laughs> um, but signing a box for the first time floored me because I wasn't ready for that. Hey, can you sign my box? I'm like, "Really? You want me to sign? Okay, sure. All right, I get it." I, I, now it's it the guys that are smoking cigars because it's what you posted the other day um or because of my brother's influence or dan's influence in the moment and they're, they're thankful um it's awesome it's it's that's why i'm in this industry i uh bear not to deviate from the question but no uh, no no not at all I, before the brand became the brand um i worked at the show in or uh not orlando was when we broke in it was vegas before that i sat on the floor with my brother and i just watched watch the traffic watch the interaction with people and i was intrigued and i and i wrote my brother a text or i sent my brother a text as he's driving back to los angeles i'm getting uh on a plane to go back to la and i said hey listen i'd love to do some merchandising for you i want to get into this industry but i'm not sure how i want to get in this industry i want to learn and he goes, ah, I got some ideas. Don't worry about it. You, you don't need to do that. And I said, all right, cool. So the next trip was Nicaragua. I got to sit on the farm with the Garcia family at night. And I was just, I was floored. They work so hard. They're so passionate about what they do. Um, and, you know, to be together with a bunch of people at the end of the night, drinking beer or rum and having a great home cooked food after they worked so hard it floored me and I, I knew i had to be in it you know um i saw how much it how much love it brought my my brother because papina and my brother's relationship is amazing and, and the garcia ziani and 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 jaime treat my brother like family um i knew i had to get into it i had to get a piece of it um so the end consumers going back to the the the, the conversation the end consumers are part of that family now and uh I'm blessed. I, I, I'm very lucky. And that's what I was going to say is that, so your, your calling started with the people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it wasn't just no this, it was, it was the people is what mm -hmm. got you. It was what hooked you, so to speak. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of our industry right now. It's still, this is, this is amazing. The tobacco is absolutely what we're here for, but our camaraderie in the business and everybody getting along. Um, I, I feel a little bit, we lost our way and, you know, a couple of years ago, I felt there was a little riff in the industry because I think the, the, the FDA piece was looming. Um, but I think it's coming back that community feel that, 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 uh, that love for one another and that respect for one another. So the, the community that has been established, um, specifically around your brands. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you guys talk about the, 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 the legendary saints and sinners groups, the BOTL guys, um, just fans in general, mm -hmm. you know, this is, uh, you know, you guys have the, the brands that are receiving amazing following considering, um, you know, it's still, you know, by definition and production level, it's still considered, you know, the, the definition changes daily, but it's still considered a boutique brand. Right. And right. It is. But like you said, so many people have gotten started on it and there's this, I mean, massive, massive fan base, but it's not just a fan base. It's a community. What, when you, when you first, okay. So after, you know, after your, after your calling, so to speak, and you're sit down and everything. And as you, if you've, as you've kind of put years into this now, 
mm-hmm. and you've seen that community grow and you've seen yourself become a part of it. What is, what has impressed you most about the camaraderie itself? Hmm. Uh, boy, that's a, that's a pretty broad question there. <laughs> um, the most impressive Open the door thing, for you, man. You can go yeah. anywhere you want with it. <laughs> nah, no. You know what? The amazing thing is, is that my brother and I can actually work very well together. You, you know, I got in this industry worried about that. Um, working with my brother, you know, you see a lot of family businesses and people go a million different directions and, and, and they don't get along. Uh, I think we, we get along very well. Um, we work well together. Um, and that I'm blessed. Um, but the boy, I don't know. Re-enter that question again, Bear. Shoot it again. Shoot it at me. So what what is imp- you know what has impressed you the most about the camaraderie uh, in the community oh. that you guys have built? Uh, just the 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 love of 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 the leaf. You know the camaraderie about around the cigar. Um, uh, the gatherings, the the Saints and Sinners Herfs, the the BOTL trip. Uh, that we take with my father. We, we took one two or three years ago with the guys from Chicago. Um, just that we're all friends that we, uh, this is a bind. This is the, the, the bond and uh, lifetime friends, you know, um, getting to meet you, getting to meet guys like Austin and everybody else from Keller and Euless with my, at Michael's that are just fabulous people. And uh I think that's really that in a nutshell. Well, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And the, uh, it, that is something that's, that I really am impressed with over and over again, just in this industry in general. Uh, and you guys are certainly, uh, uh, certainly one of the better representations of that is mm-hmm. that, um, um, you're, you know, Pete specifically, but I, you said this about him one time, but I, I, I would put you and Dan and specifically Dan as well up, uh, against him in terms of, in terms of your ironclad, uh, iron trap memory. Mm. Um, and just, I mean, you meet tens of thousands of people yeah. and yet to, you know, I just walk up, Hey bear, good to see you, yeah. you know, or, you know, or, or whoever, you know, yeah. and, and it's, um, it's it's one of the things that that I think drives the success of of your brand and the community that you that you guys have built is this this um, this sense of inclusion that you guys right. create and it's it's you know while Saints and Sinners is select it's a distinct group within the community and everything uh, there it's it's very you know you guys go out of your way to be very inclusive um, right. with everybody and I think that that's um, I think that's one of the absolute best traits that anyone could have in this business. Right. Staying humble and, and being approachable. Uh, those are two very big attributes that you have to have. Um, being approachable is, is, is probably the biggest one because people want to attach this to you in some way um, because it might be their favorite stick. They might want to tell you it's their least favorite stick but they're going to have that conversation with you. And that, that means a lot to them. You know, um, it's just like sitting in a cigar lounge. It's the grand equalizer as Rocky said in the movie. I know you haven't seen the movie yet, bear, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it, 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 it brings everything back to a, a, a level playing field. Uh, the movie, of course, you're referring to is Hand Rolled. And uh, if you have had the opportunity to view it, you know about its greatness. No, I have not had the privilege yet. But uh, one day, yes, and, one and, day and, I will sit down and I will be able to see it. And I'm so excited about that project. Ho- hopefully it will be soon. Uh, I didn't get any news from Pete on that side because he's probably asleep right now. But uh, I, I, think, uh, I think something's uh, looming um, with the movie. Terrific. Terrific. Great, great news. Uh, always moving forward is always a great news on that. Um, my, my, my last in, uh, my last kind of final point, uh, Casey, I, I like to, uh, I like to throw a curveball at the end and I usually give my guests a little bit of a, a preemptive vision of what that is. And I apologize. I did not give that to you. So I, I, I promise, I promise this is not life or death or anything. I, I'm going to uh, promise you that I might not answer this. That's fine. That's <laughs> totally fine. So the curveball is, if you could go back to 2011's version of Casey Johnson, so Casey mm-hmm. Johnson in 2011, 
Um, if someone told you that you would be in the shoes that you're in today, would you have believed them? Hmm. 2011. So you have, so, okay, no, 2010. Cause in 2011, you actually went to the show and right. sat on the phone. That's when you're yeah. 2010. 2010. So um, a decade ago, nine years ago, if someone said, Hey, this is going to not, not only are you going to join your brother in business, but you are going to have this amazing success story, this amazing pathway, this amazing team that you're going to be a part of. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I would ever have thought that. I, I mean, I, I, I got my start smoking cigars through Pete um, when he was working the Grand Havana room. So probably not. Uh, never thought of this being a joint venture with Atelier. Um, but um, the road that was traveled, this journey that uh, we've been on, and some of it's been windy for sure, um, has been great. It's been a great um, chance for me to explore tobacco more, um, reintroduce myself to sales because I was in sales with Adidas for years, um, and I took a break from that. Um, it's made me a better person. So, um, did I envision, um, how I got there or where I am now? No, but I know that I've become better for, for what I've learned along the journey. So, so, so I got to ask on that. So sure. why is, why is 2019's Casey Johnson better than 2010's Casey Johnson? Um, in a better place in a better place. Uh, I got a daughter that's going into college, uh, a son that's a son that's, uh, going to be a freshman in high school next year. Oh goodness. Um, I've been <laughs> able, i yeah, I've been able to maintain the sense of family. Um, and, uh, this has really given me a chance there. Uh, cause I get up and travel with my sales reps and, to events, uh, given me a chance to still live in Maine, which is off the beaten path in the tobacco world. Um, uh, to live in Maine, give my my kids a great education in school, keep my family intact, and uh, keep my sanity in a in a slow slow ride state. You know, we're uh, we're pretty easy going up here. That's you know that's where my father's side of the family is from. So I have a lot of relatives up in Maine and yeah. New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts area. Uh, New England, just in general, and uh, um, I, I confess, I was living under a rock. I was listening. I was listening to an interview that Pete was doing, and how he said he was from Maine, and like I literally like dropped what I was doing. <laughs> I had no, I had no idea, and I had no idea that you guys were from there. Yeah, and and that and you still call it home. Um, that that is that is what's that is pretty remarkable that you know that you're able to have had the success that you've had and still be able to uh, reside in the place that you love so much. Right. No, I've been blessed. You know, it could be Miami, it could be LA. Um, and my brother uh, has given me the, the ability to, to live where I live. I mean, he could ask me to come down and, and, and uh, run something in Miami or, or work out of uh, LA, but uh, he's given me the ability to live here. So it's great. A lot of people don't know. There's a there's a lot of great tobacco people out of uh, out of Maine, though. Yes, John Carney. John Carney. Yep. I got to give John Carney some props. Uh, Johan was from Freiburg, Maine. Um, Johan from Davidoff. Right. That's right. Um, I know he lives in Massachusetts, or he lived in Massachusetts before he moved down, but he went to Freiburg Academy. Um, and then Andy Andy Nagy, who uh, writes for Cigar Aficionado. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I did know that too. Yes. Little, yeah, little, sure little. He's from our hometown. I coached, I coached Andy Nagy in lacrosse and hockey. How about that one? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Little boy. So did he, he did he, did he make the right career choice coach? I think he did. <laughs> I think he did. So here's a, here's a the twist. His dad's the one that got me in the sporting goods industry. Oh, wow. That's man. That's the small world, right? Big Red Sox go. fan, yeah. His dad, uh, his dad is he passed a while ago, but uh, Laszlo, uh, Laszlo, would, we would sit up at night. He he opened a small sporting goods store um, in Maine, and he he let me work for him. 
And he said, you're the manager now. And I'm like, oh, great. And I, <laughs> I knew Andy when he was five years old, I think. So, yeah, small world. But, that, uh, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, when you um, you told me about your coaching still uh, when we were having a conversation down here in Texas. And uh, then you said you were at practice. And I was thought it was out of season. And I, it didn't dawn on me that it was, it's, you've coached lacrosse for, 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 for over two decades now. Yeah, twenty-one years. Uh, it's it's that's been the fun ride. That that it, it's getting more more difficult coaching uh, high school kids. I'm 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 distancing myself away from that age group, which sucks because I, I I'm not cool anymore. Uh, they they see me on on Facebook and Instagram going, oh, that's cool what you do, but you know, but uh, yeah, they I'm not that cool. They they don't they they're like, all right, you're gonna motivate us motivate us to play, but nah, not that cool. Well, I have a hunch that most of my viewers and listeners will disagree with that statement because you are cool, <laughs> and uh, I I, I will disagree with that as well. But uh, really, really appreciate um, your time this evening, Casey. Uh, just oh, absolutely fantastic. A privilege to uh, sit down with you and, and talk a little bit about um, just the very, as we said it several times tonight, the very unique path uh, that Casey Johnson took and that Latillier started as a project, an idea, and has become uh, such a well-versed and uh, distinct part of this industry. Um, it's just been, been fantastic. And I, you know, it's not like it's, it's over. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, no. it's, it's, it's the end of the beginning, so to speak. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Next, next you're going to have to get Dan out of here uh, on, on the show because uh, um, Dan's got some really fun things to tell you about surrogates and, and, uh, and how that all began. Uh, I'm going to let him do that. Fantastic. Well, we, calling him out on air so like Dan, Dan, there you go I'm up, I'm up for having you anytime and uh, i know you're you'll be listening or watching at some point so I'll, i'm up for having you anytime that you want uh and i'll be reaching out to you soon so all <laughs> right man. great um but for everyone out there we really appreciate all your likes shares comments uh and thank you for subscribing um remember to uh, actually it's actually cool if you actually unsubscribe but don't forget to resubscribe because that that does something that's really positive i'm told so i always have to tell people that. <laughs> leave a review uh and we always appreciate everyone including our sponsors and if you are listening to wherever you listen to podcasts whether that be apple Podcasts, google play spotify tune in or podbean or anywhere else you're listening to exclusively because of cornelius and anthony premium cigars uh, we really appreciate everything including the valuable time of our esteemed guest this evening, Mr. Casey Johnson of Latelier and Tatuaje. And uh, we thank you all this evening. So for everyone out there, as always, I'm Barry Duplissy. We'll see you next time.